John! Anthony. John! Now's not a good time. John. You alright? You, uh, fucked up? I mean, I know I'm a bit fucked up, but it's just the whiskey. <sighs> I imagine you are fucked up in a whole different kind of way, huh? I'm fine, Anthony. I just need to get back to my work. Oh, yeah. What page are you on, John? Huh? I just reached page 40. I believe. Yes. One of the companions is missing. And so is his knife. So yes, I just reached page 40. Let's see. Okay, John. I thought you'd be special. But I'm afraid. Time is up. What can I say? Very sorry. Just reached page 40. You've been on page 40 for six goddamn weeks. What? No. You can't have been. I don't have that much time! <sighs> but Lamont says it's time for the book to move on. I wouldn't do that, Anthony doesn't like violence. <laughs> well then, it's gonna hate me. Oh, God damn it, John! You are past page 40! Oh look, you're right, page 43. Ah, fuck you! That will be painless. So it keeps telling me. Fuck you, John! If only there was a quicker way to just skip to the end. Private journal from Luke Harding. This is for whoever reads the book next. I'm not sure how I've made it this far, but maybe my story will help you reach the end of yours. How did this all start? I guess you need to know how I ended up with the book. I need to back up a couple of cases. When I first started working for Mr. Fairweather, I thought it was a simple surveillance job. Follow ten people and catch them doing something just a little dirty. It sounded simple enough. Hell, I'd already knocked off the first eight. But the ninth was a well-respected priest. I really thought this one would take a while. But I was forgetting what side of the tracks I was on. Prostitution is immoral. Proverb 23. so close to a payday. But what I didn't realize was something really valuable was passing through town. 
my employer was about to make a very dangerous power play. And there I was, about to walk right into the middle of it all. I had to keep my tail between my legs, because as easy as the first nine on my list had been, the tenth had proven impossible. It was time to have an audience with Mr. Fairweather, a wrestling promoter turned crook. The champ had arrived. Scotty was Fairweather's right-hand man. He went back. We'd been friends and enemies several times. I wasn't sure where the scorecard had left off when Scotty introduced me to Fairweather. But I was too broke to care. for myself. Me? I'm both. Uh, you doing a list? A basic shit. Try to find a little dirt on each person. Hey, who took my fucking cheese grater? Fucking you. Take it easy, Ferox. Mr. Fairweather will see you now. Mr. Luke Harding. I gotta tell you, I got a five-year-old niece who can fly a drone better than you. Well, you got what I needed from that guy, so... Good. I just got one... glaringly obvious thing to discuss here. You see this how I gave you a list with ten names on it? I know, but... Now, I, I, I ain't no math magician, but I, I'm only seeing... Uh, Nine files here. Now, Larry. Yes, sir. If I was to ask you for, say, 10 cigars, what would you do? I'd bring you 10 cigars, Mr. Fairweather. And if you only came back with nine? Oh, no. I'd never come back with only nine, sir. You see, Luke, that's why Larry is wearing more expensive shoes than you are. Why oh, he smells better. Why oh, is a nicer haircut? Oh, yes. Pussy. Hanging off him all the time because Larry knows how to fucking count that thing! Look. I followed that Gary Wang guy for a month. The kid's clean. So you're going to bat for this squeaky McLean? Yes. So I'm paying you to tell me that this kid could be standing at the gates of heaven and God himself wouldn't find the parking ticket. Yes. And even with our contract that states you only pay half. I know our fucking contract, Mr. Harding. Believe me, it was a one-time thing. I get the hell out of my office. Actually, I was hoping to get that well, Mr. Fairweather says it's time to go, it's time to go. If you don't mind, I have some bills. Yeah, if I don't mind. That's all I hear all day long. If you don't mind, Mr. Fairweather. If you don't mind, Mr. Fairweather. Well, I mind! For fuck's sake. The fuck am I paying you for? Give me a runway, goddammit! Okay. Here's your salary. Miserable failure, Harding. Please welcome to the stage, Ruby Red. Happy birthday to me. Time for my annual email from my father's estate. He paid to record dozens of messages for me from his deathbed. It was the greatest gift of all. A reminder that he was dead.
It's your 37th birthday. You are my one chance at a legacy. Hey! And look what I got to work with. Two shots whiskey. You miserable excuse for a human being. Thanks for asking, Dad. Now I know that life has probably chewed you up and spit you out a few times. Angelina's doing just fine. You were the most pointless part of my existence. I don't get to see her much, but... Your uh, horror of a mother hated every second of you. I tried to be there for her. And she... <laughs> Having a terrible father was no excuse for being one. My daughter Angelina was having a rough go at her mother's. And here I was, just squeezing by. And only getting half my pay meant I wasn't crawling out of my hole anytime soon. But at least it was a start. Monica. Luke. I got my rent and what I was short last month. <gasps> It looks like Luke and Monica are up to something. What? Are you sure you can do Just this? Just take it while I got it. <laughs> Neighbor! Hey, hey Edwin. how you doing? Shut up! Yeah? Is it raining today? Did, no. did you think? No? I'm good. It's, it's not gonna rain today. I'm just tired. What are you mumbling about? You got nothing to say. I hope I hope it doesn't rain. I hope it doesn't no. rain too, buddy. <sighs> Get a drink. You Cow. worthless piece of shit. Mountains are out. Yeah, they certainly are. I guess the dream was to land one big case. Earn enough to move to a better section of town. Work for a bigger player, like Mr. Lamont. He ran this city. A job from him could change a man's destiny. Whereas a call from Fairweather tended to be more trouble than it was worth. Hello? Mr. Harding, Jules Fairweather here. What now? Uh, don't be like that. I, I was actually just calling to apologize. I, I sometimes let my emotions get ahead of me. I get so used to dealing with dipshits all day, you know. You know how it is. Anyway, uh, looks like you're right on point with this Gary Hung kid, so my partners and I have a little test. Our friend Gary Hung has passed this test, so now we need to deliver to him his prize. What kind of prize? Well, that's a ten thousand dollar question, isn't it? What do you mean? I give you ten grand to deliver this package, and you never ask that question again. That's a lot of money. This isn't some kind of hit or anything. A hit? Gonna commit a homicide. My first instinct is to call up some trailer park garbage for fuck. I'm really sorry. I must be off my meds. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I have a simple but very important task: deliver a package to carry home, and I. I can't stress this enough. Gary himself has to be the one who opens it now. You've tailed this guy for a month, so you know his schedule. <sighs> Simple delivery job. I'll be there in an hour. What a fucking idiot. So, now's the time? Yeah. Doctor Who is on in a couple of hours, and Gary always watches it alone. Huh. Then go to it. My associates will accompany you. Uh, I don't really need uh, them. Relax. They're on your side now. Gentle as kittens. Meow. This is Gary Huang. He's a pretty lucky guy, right? Don't fish, Luke. It's very unbecoming. 
In your face. Who the fuck is this? Got no idea. But you know, this is the first time that someone's actually passed the test. The hell are you talking about? Scott, you gotta pay more fucking attention. Forgive me if I'm too busy main eventing oh, and getting laid to worry about your extra hired goon. You make it sound so fucking dirty. <laughs> Whatever was in that package had somehow saved my life. Maybe deep down I felt a connection with it. Like I owed it something. But the truth is, I killed one of Lamont's men. Not exactly the introduction I was looking for. If he was somehow involved, then I need to get rid of that package immediately. Still chasing money.
I write. The creature draws near. I can't help you survive, but if you want me to free your soul, you need only to stand up. Otherwise, please remain seated while reading this book. getting shot at but lucky for you I still got your package you want it back well yeah here's the deal you pay me what you promised for the delivery I bring you the package back we can call it danger pay for keeping your merchandise safe all right my place tomorrow at noon 45th and Thurlow unit 273 very well Jules, why did you possibly think you could steal from me? Well, my friend, I hope you're ready. I want you to go there tomorrow noon. Pay whatever the price and bring me back my book. Okay. And bring Jacob with you. Things have been messed up enough already. I think we should err on the side of caution on this one. Mm -hmm. Hi, honey. Hey, Dad. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, how are you? Look, uh, do you remember when you said that, you know, if, 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 if things ever got rough for me or whatever, that I, I could come stay with you for a while or something. Yeah, I remember that. No, no, that's fine. It won't take me long to uh, straighten up. Luke, it's like almost 11 o'clock here. I know. Yeah, I just realized what a terrible idea this is. Am I supposed to mace you now? I hope not. Tell me what the hell it is you want. Your cleaning services. And I can help. And I got this. I didn't have any cash left, but I do have this fine bottle of brandy. It's worth over $90. There's still at least 50 bucks worth. You want me to help you clean that shithole apartment of yours tonight? And I can pay you more later, too. Look, I'm sorry, Luke. I clean all day, and I just... I just really want to... I understand. It. You know, just keep that bottle of brandy, and I'll just... I'm sorry I bugged you. Why do you want that apartment of yours clean by tomorrow? My daughter? Oh, no. You did not lay some sob story on me, especially about some kid. How old is she? 18, just. How rough she had it. Very rough. So there's a slim chance right now that you can make up for a fraction of the crap that you put her through. A very small chance. And you got paper towels? Well, yeah, I think I've got a... F oh, oh my God, thank you so much. Be ready. I will. Get started here. You get to the bathroom. And uh, don't hesitate to throw anything out. I'm gonna stack anything that looks important on your table. You can go through it later. Okay. Only two more trips to the dumpster, and then we're done.
It's so adequate. So, how long's it been since you've seen your daughter? Two years, probably more. You miss her? So much, but I mean, I ain't got much. You got a safe place to sleep. Sometimes that's enough. I guess. There was a time in my life where I would have killed for just enough stability to get something going. <sighs> Make a pretty good team, you and me. You didn't step on my toes once. You know, you're... I'm sorry, it's just... It's okay. You looked interested. Is my daughter coming here soon? It's okay. You go be a good daddy now. My dad always said it's better to piss a woman off for a night than for a lifetime. Like always, I wish she was out of my head. The thing is, Monica was the sharpest one in the tenement. She didn't deserve to get caught up with someone like me. soft ground using a whaling hook where we buried it immediately. What a weak, miserable, pathetic excuse for a... First entry for a personal interest case. Attempting to assess the value of an untitled journal. Something about an explorer trapped in the woods. If it is a true journal, he's clearly going insane from panic. What? I should have tons. First entry for a personal interest case. Attempting to assess the value of an untitled journal. The text appears to be handwritten in ink. First journal entry for Luke Harding. This is the first entry for a personal interest case. I'm trying to figure out assessing the value of a book with no title that I think might be priceless. His ship landed in 1903. There were 20 in his original part. It's some kind of residue. I had enough of this fucking book. What the hell was I just saying? God damn it.
don't seem to be showing any symptoms, but I know my mind has been poisoned. I feel my memory shattering until I can't trust my own thoughts. I can't trust anyone. Colin! You must be Luke Hardy. Bear with him? We came for the package. Excuse my eager friend, but we are here for business on the table. You don't look familiar. You do. You work for Fairweather much? Only once, but it's been a long job. My God. You've only had it for one day? Yeah. Wait, what? Look. I just want that thing gone. I'm afraid. It's a little late for that. Thank you for your time. Well, where are you going? We had a deal. We came for a package, not this coloring book. That's bullshit. Look, I just need that money. If you have any problems, take it up with Fairweather. Hey, why don't you uh, buy some sleeves? I'm really very sorry, Mr. Harding, but believe me, there's nothing more we can do for you. Answer, you bastard. Hello? Fairweather. Yeah, this is Jules Fairweather. It's Luke Harding. Your men came and refused the package. I see. Did you by chance open the book? Oh, well, yeah. That would explain things from my end. Look, I just need that money. I don't care about some stupid book. Shit, Harding. Let's just say that's about to change. I could snipe him easy. The man's performed a miracle. And all you can think to do is kill him? Mr. Lamont. Do you have it? It's inside, but it's been compromised. Tragic, but acceptable. The guy is on page 18. Pardon? It's true, sir. Page 18. In one night? By my own eyes. I saw it. Well, that changes everything. Many good people to the hooks. What hooks? Well, they come with a book. What? The rest will come from you. You just gotta get to the ending. Uh, I doubt you'll survive, but who knows? I don't want him touched. Observe and get closer. I want a full study. As much as I'd like to break out my violin and play the sad tune you wanna hear, I'm in over my head too. We need to work together to get out we of We had this. a simple deal. I want you to come. And pick up this goddamn book. No advice I give will make any sense to you right now. We're just gonna have to wait until you've read more. I've hacked into his phone. It's recording a conversation right now. Anything unusual? Do not send those two monkeys over here anymore. It sounds like he's talking to flies. I like he does. That's what I expected. It was at that moment I decided, whether it was a possessed book, a toxic hallucinogenic, or they were testing some kind of elaborate con on me, I would treat this like any other case. I keep leaving notes to myself, to help with my sudden lapses in my memory. I would use the explorer's own words to track him and plot out his journey. The creature was so hideous, their instinct was to bury it. Then the madness set in. Hallucinations, memory loss, and paranoia. But the explorer only had a feather and ink to try and document his experience. 
where his eye could separate and organize his random thoughts. I just need to keep track. I began with two companions. A lantern, a length of rope, and a knife. Maybe the substance is made from some rare plant. I had to get to know him. How can an explorer simply bury the discovery of a lifetime? And then it hit me. The one thing the explorer was doing that was out of character. To keep such immaculate records, it never once mentioned this mysterious substance. What if he had brought it back? What if this isn't just a journal of the creature? This is its tomb. That is, assuming that it's dead. These brief flashes, somehow, it all just comes together. And I know exactly where he is. And what he needs to do. So how was the bus? Yeah, um, sorry I was late. That's okay. <sighs> I'll give you as much space as I can. You come and go as you like. And if you're really en route to someplace else, and you just stop by to sting me, there's a firebox wedged behind the bookcase there. What little stuff of value I got is in it. I'm not saying that I think that's what you came for, just that I'd understand. And, uh, I wouldn't recommend bringing any guys home. Sorry, but that's the best I can offer. That's okay. How's the couch? Yeah, it's comfy, I guess. Yeah. Right, I'm going to take a nap. Yep. How's the apartment holding up? It's doing great. Great. Um, listen, I've been getting a lot of calls lately. What kind of calls? Uh, Mrs. Oates, she's always seeing things around here. And I figured since we have a private detective in the building, I might as well give him a call and ask him if he wants to. I hear something. You're cooking, aren't you? Yeah, just lunch. Same plans for dinner? Is this an invitation? My place? Yeah.
Yeah. You're still alive. Damn good thing there's no gambling in hell or I'd be a poor man right now. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. Lamont must be pissed. A moron like you comes Look. along and passes page 40. I want you to give me five grand. I'll take it to you. You won't be going anywhere. You probably already tried to leave a dozen times. Walked around in some days only to wake up back in front of the book. Doesn't work. And it only wears you out quicker. I keep seeing things. Yeah, most of it's just in your head now. You just need to get to the end of the story. What's so special about the ending? That's what I wanted to find out. I stole the book to harness its power. Just remember, all this shit started the moment you opened that book, and it'll finish when you're done reading it. Just read the book. The voice spoke as if it were my own thoughts, constantly trying to trick me. Okay. Fuck you, Dad. Did you just tell your father to fuck off? And who the hell is this? So, today, I can go to um, Julie's place. She's this girl I met on the bus. And she said she's gonna help me with my resume and stuff, so. Yeah, great. Are there any openings at your office? No. Nothing, uh, nothing like in the mail room or. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I'm not an accountant. Oh. Um. Okay, so what do you do then? Uh, surveillance, security. What, like a private eye? Well, why wouldn't you tell me you were a private investigator? It's like badass. Just wanted to set a good example. By pretending to be an accountant? Here, here. I'll take it up for you. I'm up. Don't you have to finish getting dressed first? I am finished. Ain't that a bra? Well, like, it acts like one, but it's like a shirt. Two, kind of. Can you zip it up and just pretend that's how you're gonna look today? Yeah, fine. You know, for the couch. No worries. See ya. Sorry. Fuck, man. This job usually has caviar and shit. How the hell are we bothering this nobody? Because he's got street smarts. Like you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. All this time they've been dicking around with these Harvard grad types like you. Hey, hold on. But it takes a man like me to get the job done. <laughs> This time, Lamont's been trying to do it like it's some kind of princess. When the fact is, it's nothing but a soulless, primitive monster. Exactly. See, if it were me, I would just pretend to read the thing. How about that? Two minutes on the job, and you've already solved the whole thing. Oh, one more thing. As a piece of advice, shit goes down, walk away. Safety first. You're gonna be around a long time, Boston.
about this equipment. Did you have family in the Cold War? What? Exactly what I thought. Jesus. God damn it, am I thirsty? Nice camera placement, Boston. Note to self, I already have water. Okay, this place gets a C plus for sandwich fixing. Something's happening. That was, uh, fascinating. Mustard? This place is spooky. This is all in your head. Fuck. Ah. Uh, remember when I told you about Julie? Nice to meet you, Mr. Harding. Yeah, you too. We were just gonna watch a movie, so I didn't think you'd mind. Oh, okay. Well, you two have a good time. Dad? Yeah? Julie is my special friend. Well, that I didn't know. You and me are gonna have a talk. If you have a problem with this, I can't. Hey, just my daughter's go. sexuality is none of my business. But if you want to sit that close to her, it is. Now, my daughter is a very special person with a lot of dreams and ambitions. And I don't want her hooking up with some. Dad! Person with one thing on their mind. So, what are your intentions? Um. Noble. We're just getting to know each other, seeing if we click or not. Well, I don't think you have to sit that close to do that, but so be it. You're out of here by 11.30. Yes, sir. Okay, enjoy the movie. Thanks. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. That was so cute. That was not cute. That was so embarrassing. Don't be nice. He puts you on that same pedestal that I want. I could feel exposure to the book boring holes in my memory as it assaulted me with my past. God damn it, where am I, Kate? So you might want to wear gloves when you read it. As for me, it was a little late. So I decided to meet this thing head on. Ah! Hmm. Did 
Just as your notes predict, here you are. Welcome to the future, Mr. Harding. Dad, are you home? I need the shower. Stay calm, Mr. Harding. You're experiencing a vision from the book. Do I know you? No. But I feel like I know you. And thanks to your notes, I've captured this. What is it? They spawned the moment I reached page 18. And you've already warned me what's coming next. I've been following your story, quietly, from the shadows. You have an advantage. I believe the book chooses those it wants to include in its pages. It chose you. How can I stop it? Depends if we can trust each other. How do I know you're not a manifestation of the book? Trying to manipulate me. You see, I already know your story. Tell me mine. What's wrong with your face? It's okay, Luke. You're not even here. Yeah, so that's pretty much everything, you know, about me that I got for first aid confessions. You all right? Yeah. How's it going? Are we going to the gym? They have one here. Thanks for uh, coming over. Thanks for the dinner and the wine. He's a good listener. Like, I had a lot of fun tonight, and um, I look forward to date number two. Me too. There's something too innocent about him. Look at her face. She's already worried about hurting him. Of course. Anyway, that was nice. Yeah. Good night. No. No chance. Hey, Dad. Is your date over already? It wasn't much of a date. Too bad. I didn't have much of a date either. Why? Did she do something? No. I did something. You know, you might find this hard to believe, but I'm actually the one that the parents warn their kids about. And Julie would never admit it, but I know she's only going out with me to pity. She's only gonna feel that way about you if you keep telling her to. Are you giving me advice? You may not think that I know much about relationships, but I can get you started. I don't know, like, I just... Like, I don't know what to say or what to do. She's, she's so confusing. Is there music on this thing? Yeah. Boston, why don't you hit the sheets? I'll take the first shift. What? The most important thing that you need to know about women is that they love to dance. No, I don't dance. Prove it. Dad, seriously? Well, you remember we're the only two people in this room. I can't believe you. Right. You ready? I wish my dad would dance with that. Please go to sleep. Now you take Julie dancing, and you're gonna prove to her that you know how to have fun. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> 
Just grab the bottle of wine. That's what you always end up picking. I ain't thirsty. It's just that... Can't you hear that? Hear what? Scratching. Please. I don't hear nothing but you. Bitching about nothing. I'm calling Monica. Will you leave her alone? We ain't got rats. We ain't got raccoons. There's only one thing I get around here. Yeah, what's that? Irritated by the fucking worthless sound of your voice. I thought you were a goner. I even let myself rot. Can you give me something? What do you already know about the book? I'll tell you one thing. You get to the end, you'll be the safest man on the planet. Lamont will keep you protected for that piece of information. He's the only guy to survive an encounter with the book. We ain't exactly on speaking terms anymore. And although I was grateful to have two companions, I just couldn't shake the feeling that I'd begun this journey alone. Dad! Jesus! Did you not hear me calling you? Oh my god, you get so spaced out when you read that what? Listen, you need to promise me you're not gonna read this thing. Dad! You literally, you give me this speech every 20 minutes. I don't wanna read your stupid book. I was just trying to show you my new outfit, that's all. Well, you look beautiful. Thanks. Okay, well, you need to shower because Julie's gonna be here at six, so. Me? Yeah, you've been like festering in that bedroom for too long. You stink. I need you to make sure that you stay away from that thing. Dad, I don't want to read your stupid book. Are you serious? Okay, I've got to clean up out here. Can you just, can you hurry up? Fine. See, I didn't kill my husband. He, he turned into my uncle. I mean, he literally turned into my uncle. And my uncle's already dead. Whatever you say, Mrs. Oates. Ms. Oates, if you don't mind. Good evening, Mr. Harding. Gifts. The roses are for Angelina, but the chocolates are for you. You are so sweet! Mm, thank you. Butter not the old man. What'd you get, Dad? Uh, chocolates. Have one? Yeah. Uh, you drive here? No, I took a cab. Good, I'll even uh, pay for the cab for a home. Oh, no, no Dad, no, it's no. fine. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, just... Promise me you, you'll go easy on the drinks. We'll be too busy dancing. Don't worry about it. Good. Okay. Chocolate? Sure. Thanks. Bye, Dad. Bye.
can't play with you. At least page 70. Not that I was looking too close. I'm sorry. Maybe whatever you are was somehow real. But you are not my daughter! I'm real! Relax. That's why you bring me in. I'm always one step ahead. Who the hell am I talking to? finally re-established communication with Jacob in Boston. They're acting very... peculiar. Really? Put them on. everything? He's been very active on the book. Oh, I have something to report. Oh, Dave, that jack-off standing right next to you. Harden? Kept telling us there's a third person in the room with us. I see. That shit ain't funny, Dave. Do you want a beer? No, no, I'll run a little bit. Such beautiful eyes. We would appreciate a certain professionalism. Of course. Dave, apologize for your poor sense of humor. I'm sorry. Do you think we're a fun couple? I'm having a fun time. Me too. Oh, we'd still have to dance again. Thank you, sir. Things are just getting a little tense around here. Well, I'm glad everything's on track. I look forward to your next updates. What's happening? Jacob, you gotta try this. This is all like 3D and stuff. Oh. Oh. I find them disorientating. Oh, it's so cool though. <laughs> oh, wow. So. Wow. You had a point. Safety first. Mr. Lamont, if you were able to hear this message, I wanted you to know I quit. Vacate now. Get out. Okay, okay. okay. Fuck. 
Thank you. Thanks. Drive up. You, yeah. Get me to the sure. airport now. Right, Tango? <laughs> you got it, girl. just about to have tea. Why don't you join us? Dad? Fucking cheese! You didn't ask for my date one. Here and have a nice cup of tea. I know who you think we are. We are not you demons. You are demons. Oh, you may not know it yet, but it'll happen. Oh, here. It's not loaded! Hey, Jules, um. I need you to call me back. Look, I think when we were at the club, someone sent me something. It's not until I reach the last few pages of this journal I know what I need to do. this story. <laughs> or will the creature find another way to preserve itself? He killed them. He killed all of them. Was that really his solution? Was it supposed to be mine? Luke, you're so close. Just one last demon to kill. Angelina, she's in the closet. So finish the book, please. My time is up. I just gotta know now. A goddamn mess. Don't let the poor bastard hang up the phone. Hey, weather! The explorer's ending wasn't enough. The creature wanted me to kill. But violence hadn't exactly worked out for the Explorer. How do I reason with something that really thinks it's my baby girl? I'd have to face something I'd intended to take. The grave. When I was a kid, I went and I... Save me! 
You're not my daughter! I was playing, and I had your keys, I guess. I don't know, I thought it would be funny or something, but then you started to get mad. And you started to get upset. And then you just, you left. I'm sorry, kid. Your father died in prison when you were two. Huh. Figures. It was your fault. I just couldn't take anything with you anymore. Why wouldn't Mom say anything? I told your mother not to tell you. Yeah, is that why you just couldn't stand me? No. I found something. What did you find? Love letters, not from me. I know it wasn't right, but of all the things that I've been, your father was the one thing that I couldn't let go of. Dad, I'm really sorry. Be my dad to me. <laughs> Won't hurt. <laughs> oh. Oh. What happened? What's happened is you two have just made history. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. It must be Lamont. Yes, although I've told you that several times already. Not to worry, the effects will wear off shortly. What happened to us? What happened is that instead of one survivor, we have two survivors. So rather than you're having to uh, split the reward, I'll simply double it. Of course, you'll have to surrender all the recordings you made. Sure. Good. I look forward to seeing them. The creature has found rest now. For how long? Who knows? I wish I could tell you more about the ending. But I had help. So, I meant to ask you. Yes? So I only have half the story. And my memory of it all is fading fast. We can just get you to sign some of these. And there's some mercy in knowing Angelina will forget as well. We'll have some more forms for you to sign later. Oh my god, Luke! Mrs. Oates went crazy. She killed some people and I'm so glad you're okay. Jeez. That it? That's it, John. I hear you're a real miracle worker. If the book does what you say it will, then thank you. Oh, John. Mind the hooks. A private journal from Luke Harding to Mr. Well, I didn't ask her name. So I'll just call you the surgeon. You haven't met me yet, but believe it or not, I've met you. And if you trust me, I can help you change your story. John! Anthony, I've been expecting you.